Welcome to Electrified. It's your host, Dylan Loomis. Quick shout out to my newest patrons, Brian D, Phil K, and Alex N. Thank you for choosing to support the channel. Some of you probably remember this. Back in September 2016, it was first reported that Tesla was working on a top secret special glass program. This was supposedly taking place at the design studio in Hawthorne, California. Two years ago, Elon said this. Having the glass like this is, right. is actually quite hard because it's so sloped. Is that a special kind of glass? Is that different oh, yeah. well, than normal windshield glass? Um, we are going to be using um, effectively uh, a form of arm armored glass right. for the car. And the door panels of the car are the 300 series stainless steel and it's so tough that it's bulletproof to a handgun. Then one year ago on Tesla's YouTube channel, they uploaded this video talking about their Tesla glass, how it's built to block 99% of the UV rays that come in from the top of the car, how it's designed to withstand rollovers, etc. If you missed my video about Tesla's custom steel, it's featured on my channel. It's this one right here. There's been a lot of confusion around what Elon said. Many people think because Tesla has this armored glass that it's actually the windows that will be bulletproof. But in that clip, he was specifically referring to the actual body panels. But Tesla did have this patent published in summer of 2021 talking about multi-layer glass for a vehicle windshield with improved durability, specifically using borosilicate. And all of that is to land us here with a new published Tesla patent referring to glass for automotive with feature lines and how to make it. When you see these feature lines, just think of more aggressive bending of the actual glass. The patent describes the typical process for curving the front of a windshield. You take a flat sheet of glass, basically heat it up and then essentially curve it. But so far this process has been limited with how much you can actually curve the glass. So these new techniques that Tesla is planning to use for the Cybertruck and maybe the Tesla Semi will be for things like the windshield, the windows, interior glass in the cars, interior glass for the dash, gauges, displays, instrument clusters, inside panels for doors and consoles. Here you go. These feature lines are just aggressive curves or folds of the glass. For example, a faceted windshield with aggressive feature lines may be formed, which would allow Tesla to form the glass in shapes and configurations which were previously unavailable through conventional bending methods, resulting in stronger glass structures with more aesthetic options. Here's the traditional limited method and here's Tesla's method, which is indeed for multi-layered glass and single layer as well. But it's not just for the Cybertruck windshield. Again, this could be for the Tesla Semi as well. And there's something going on here with the interior dash as well. Of course, this is awesome, more Tesla innovation, but we all are going to have to be patient with the Cybertruck rollout because there is so much new technology being implemented for the first time. Remember, the Model Y got to copy a lot from the Model 3 ramp, whereas the Cybertruck is basically a brand new type of vehicle. So just remember that when we're looking at ramp figures. Brandon Flash on Twitter found that Tesla kind of had a leak in the mobile app showing this new magic dock that's going to be how Tesla rolls out CCS adaptability for Tesla superchargers in North America. This part right here is going to be the magic dock where that CCS adapter is essentially going to be stored. In Europe, where Tesla already uses the CCS adapter, this is what those customers have been seeing on V3 superchargers with a single cable. And if you see a picture of one of these bad boys, some of the older V2 superchargers actually still use the dual cable structure, which you see right here. Tesla also has the filter for superchargers open to non-Tesla on their map, but over the weekend, one of these actually showed up in Hawthorne, California. As you can see now though, it's been removed. That supercharger location in Hawthorne is right down the street from Tesla's design studio, so it would make some sense for that to be one of the first supercharger locations Tesla opens up to non-Teslas. However, so far there's no sign of that magic dock being retrofitted to those superchargers at that location yet. This of course is just a black box where this magic box will be, but the idea is that this retrofit would be pretty easy to actually install, making it a quick process. And then if you're a Tesla owner, you just pull out the single cable for the Tesla connector or the NACs. And if you need the CCS, then you pull out the bigger one with the adapter, including the CCS. So this leak could be a sign Tesla is gearing up to actually open up some superchargers to non-Tesla owners. Don't worry, I really do think Tesla will optimize the supercharging locations that are not used as heavily, at least to roll out this new feature. 
If you're Tesla, you obviously wanna maximize the utilization rates of your supercharger location, so why would you open up a busy location to start? You should start with the least used locations. And if you're still a bit confused what the handle and the actual adapter will look like, what's gonna stay stationary, what will lock and all of that, we're all mostly confused because nobody really knows for sure. But it seems like we might find out soon enough. You know, every now and then it's great to keep up with Troy and nerd out really at that granular level of detail. And if you have the time and enjoy it, more power to you. But most people just need to know this type of data. Estimated global BEV sales by year comparing the green 2021 to the orange 2022. Tesla's still the global full BEV leader around 1.3 million global deliveries in 2022, up 40% over the prior year. BYD is, yes, still in second place. However, their growth in 2022 for full BEVs, this is excluding hybrids, 184%. So yes, from a BEV standpoint, BYD is surging and 2023 will be a very interesting year. And is VW actually about to surpass Tesla? The answer is no. And just another way to visualize that data, also from Roland on Twitter, Tesla still has over 18% of the global BEV market share for 2022. In a first for Tesla, it partnered with a local church in Oakland, California to provide a new roof and some solar panels and battery storage to again serve as a blueprint to do some community building. Tesla's investment will yield more than $285,000 in electricity savings over 10 years, which they will now be able to distribute those resources more towards community development. Tesla worked with Green the Church to find a location that not only served the community, but one that is seen as a beacon of the community and that had need and desire to be a leader in clean energy generation and storage. If you'd like to throw in a question or upvote some others, Tesla's Say platform is live for the Q4 call this Wednesday. You have to do your work before 4.30 p.m. this Wednesday. We won't go over the questions, but the link is below. From Drive Tesla Canada, in 2022, there were 292.4 thousand new BEVs that hit the road, a 60% increase over 2021. And even better, Tesla ended up selling more than two and a half times the number of BEVs than all other automakers combined. Of this 292,000, Tesla sold 212,000 of those, which is 72.6%. For the model breakdown, we get a clean sweep from Tesla on the top four, followed by the Mach-E and the Bolt EUV. This is pretty cool. It's a new AI powered search tool that's being trained on Tesla's quarterly data dating back to 2011. So you can give it different prompts and questions and it'll spit out an answer. However, please be careful with this because I've used it for a few different things and I've already seen wrong and inaccurate answers like the one on the screen. It's still in an experimental state, but it will be below. For my prompt, I just put in compare Q3 2022 to Q3 of 2021, and it said Tesla delivered 20% more cars, that number was actually too low, and it said Tesla had a 12% operating margin in Q3 of 21, also too low, it was 14.6. However, it did get the other things right. I won't read these to you, but pause the screen if you want. Here are some example prompts you can use. From Sawyer, we get the first physical recall for Model Y out of Giga Berlin. Vehicles built between September and December last year may suffer from contamination in the super manifold to compressor AC line, resulting in a potential premature failure of the AC compressor. The correction, they'll flush the HVAC case and replace the compressor, the super manifold, and the AC lines. Model Y performance vehicles have been available to order in New Zealand and Australia now dating back to June of 2022. In that time, over 8,000 Model Ys have already been delivered, but they've all been the rear wheel drive variant. Now it looks like the performance variants are ready to be delivered. This coming from a TMC Tesla Motor Club forum showing that they have their VIN for their Model Y performance, which means it's been built. Right now, VW is doing a simulation in the business, acting as if it was going to spin off its charging business. And it looks like they're going to gather that data and then present it to some of the investment banks later this year. You may recall VW already is planning to spin off its battery business dubbed PowerCo sometime this year through an IPO. And it sounds like it's going to be more than just charging as VW is heavily focused on vehicle to grid and vehicle to load, encapsulating, integrating their vehicles into the grid. 
This image was trending on Reddit over the weekend. It's supposed to be from a Toyota dealership showing the estimated order timeframes for new Toyota vehicles. However, there was no date, there was no info on what Toyota dealer this was from, and it almost looks doctored if you look closely, and this really could just be the dealer trying to funnel people to buy inventory or on-lot vehicles rather than ordering a new custom model. So given the lack of context, it could be old, it could be fake, I would just be careful. Yesterday, we had Biden reminding the country to consider installing battery storage in your home to save up to 30% from the Inflation Reduction Act. I just wanted to add, be sure to check your local and state incentives as well, not just for battery energy storage, but for solar panels as well. It is true that Tesla Powerwalls are not available for standalone purchase, meaning if you wanna get one direct from Tesla, you have to order solar panels as well, or the solar roof. However, there may be a workaround to get a standalone Powerwall, and that's buying one through a Tesla certified installer. I just wanted to give you guys some comedic relief today, so go ahead and read this headline if you're just listening. Tesla needs to start acting more like Toyota and GM if it really wants to win the electric car race. This, of course, from none other than Business Insider. Just complete insanity. If you're curious what the article says, they just say really Tesla needs a more affordable vehicle and a wider lineup. As we all know, more and cheaper Tesla vehicles are coming. This is honestly a pretty encouraging stat is from a Wall Street Journal article, but Tesla retail shareholders have spent more money on Tesla stock in the past six months than in the past five years prior. This data is from Vanda Research and the chart shows that yes, Tesla investors do know how to buy the dip and they're still confident enough to do so at exceedingly high levels. A new feature is coming to the heated Tesla steering wheel sometime this year, we think. Rather than just having the on or off option, you're now going to have off, low, high, or auto. And from Tesla North, it sounds like the camera-based speed limit detection feature will be rolling out in Germany sometime soon. So far, the speed limit signs showing up on the Tesla UI have been from map data, but that can be outdated. This feature could roll out in the next one to two weeks. A new Tesla service center has been completed in St. Petersburg, Florida, which will hopefully help reduce some of the demand at the Tampa location. You may have seen GM only delivered just over 100 of its new Cadillac Lyric last year, but they actually produced over 8,000. They were really just waiting to do the deliveries to work through some bugs and issues. GM is saying this was a strategic move to deal with things like software bugs, cracking liftgate panels, and display screen troubles, but it sounds like deliveries have resumed. This article from Reuters just talks about how there are many auto suppliers that traditionally focused on niches like F1 racing that are now out actively seeking new EV contracts. We know many legacy OEMs have been looking to fill some of their talent gaps, I think of software as one of the main ones, with some of these suppliers' expertise. However, when you do that, you then grow your supply chain when right now all companies are trying to what? Shrink their supply chains. It will be very interesting to watch to see which automakers really put in the work, hire the talent, and develop their own technology in-house versus take the shortcut, if you will, and just start hiring out different things from different suppliers. Historically, the auto industry has been full of companies taking shortcuts, and now where legacy OEMs, futures, and lives and profitability are all on the line, I wonder what they're going to do. It's tough though, because they're not dumb and they know that to have Tesla's margins in the future, they have to do everything they can in house. It just takes a long time and how much time do they have? Ford is going through a new round of job cuts. This time, most of them will be focused on the European market. It's tough and Ford's going to get a lot of flack from the labor unions and e-game at all. But at the end of the day, this is what they have to do to make it in the EV transition. These will mostly affect German operations, but the UK workforce will be impacted too. Ford is looking to restructure in Europe, dropping the high selling but low margin cars like the Ford Focus and the Fiesta, switching to crossovers, SUVs, and of course, all EVs. These cuts will include thousands of jobs in product development and hundreds in administrative roles. 
At Ford's technical center, where they focus on the Fiesta and the Focus, they may lay off up to 2,500 of the 3,800 jobs that were there. Another 700 jobs or 20% of the workforce could be cut at Ford's European HQ in Cologne, and about 1,200 jobs will be cut at the spare parts business. However, in terms of concrete numbers, four job losses are not yet mentioned. That should be coming in February. No surprise here, but unions and the UAW in the states are urging Biden not to make any changes to the Inflation Reduction Act. We know there's been a lot of pushback on the IRA from outside of the United States. And it's tough because both sides really do have valid points, but some of the domestic unions and environmental groups are saying the IRA has the potential to be a game changer for the industrial towns hit hardest by decades of offshoring. And of course, over the next month or so, while public comment periods are open for the IRA, there will be a lot of back and forth. When it comes to the Rolls-Royce Spectre, the very high-class luxury EV, they're saying the order intake for it is far better at this moment than we would have expected, saying they may have to change their production plans. But from what to what <laughs> is anybody's guess. If you've been around the channel for a few months, you may recall last year we shared that video from Dodge and how they're making those fake sounds for some of their upcoming EV models. Well, it looks like Ferrari is going to be doing something very similar. Now, no, this is not going to be on any current hybrid Ferrari vehicles, but it's supposed to be on one of the first full BEVs that's to be unveiled in 2025. On Twitter, it looks like Tesla Optimus now has its own account that is an official part of the Tesla brand. No tweets yet. And I'm not going to play the video for you, but over the weekend, Tesla released a new video on the Tesla bot and specifically getting into the actuators. It of course will be linked below if you wanna check out the whole thing. Hope you guys have a wonderful day. Please like the video if you did and a huge thank you to all of my Patreon supporters.